I am in the historic Netherlands city of Maastricht, and we are about to head inside the Bokhandel Dominikanen, a bookstore located inside a historic church. The church was built in 1294 by the Dominican Order, so it is over 700 years old. This is considered as one of the most beautiful bookstores in the world, but the structure has an interesting story beyond its current life. After the French besieged and captured Maastricht in 1794, General Napoleon Bonaparte decided to use this large Dominican church as storage space for the army's cavalry gear. Napoleon started a trend here, as throughout the 19th and 20th centuries, this church continued use as a warehouse. It was even turned into a bike storage at one point, and all that did a lot of damage to the structure. However, in 2005, it was renovated into this fantastic bookstore. I don't know if there's anything like it in the world. The kids section is housed in one of the apses of the church. You can still see the historic graves embedded into the floor, now stood upon by browsing 21st century consumers. Okay, this is pretty cool. It's a faded 14th century fresco, depicting scenes of theologian Thomas Aquinas' life. This is actually believed to be the oldest surviving depiction of St. Thomas Aquinas in the world, and it's the oldest ecclesiastical wall painting in the Netherlands. They did build a giant multi-level bookcase on the side of the nave, so this church with 750 meters of floor space has 1200 meters of shopping space. Alright, we are now on the upper level, which actually provides some unique angles of the church that you can't really see anywhere else. Most do not have a giant bookcase in the middle of the nave. There is also a cafe in the bookstore, and I love how they use a cross-shaped table there on what was the choir. I'm sure centuries ago there was a great altarpiece there. I did not even have time to look at the book titles, otherwise I would have spent way too much time here. But they do sell an assortment of genres in Dutch and English. Back when this was an active church, it did have fantastic decorations in here. Much of the intricate stonework still exists, but there were also frescoes which have almost entirely faded. There are vestiges of the paint on the ceilings and walls. So this bookstore inside an ancient church is genius. They are pretty respectful of the heritage of the structure, but have found a great and popular new use for it. This could be considered sacrilege, but I think it's pretty awesome. Maastricht is a strategically positioned crossroads of Europe, so over the centuries there was a power struggle over the crossing of the River Maas here, and the city changed hands a lot, between the Spanish, French, Dutch, and so on. Amidst that turbulence, the different Catholic religious orders would be invited to set up shop here by building a church, then the next occupants may kick them out, but then once they were gone, certain orders would be invited back, and they would build new churches. So what I'm trying to say is Maastricht has a lot of churches, and many of them are no longer in use. They never had the population to support that many churches, so people in the city have gotten creative with them. Several, like the old Dominican church, 
have been converted for new usages in the modern era. So we'll explore a few more examples. Here's a great one, the 15th century Crozier Monastery, which is now a luxury hotel. Centuries ago, the Crutched Friars of the Order of the Holy Cross lived here, and they produced books at this monastery. They would write, copy, and bind books. The former rooms of the monks have now been turned into modern hotel suites, which are probably way nicer than their conditions would have been. Like the Dominicans, the Order of the Holy Cross was also pushed out by the French revolutionaries after they entered the city in 1794. This monastery worked out great for military barracks, and the order never came back. This opened as the Cruz Huron Hotel, a magnificent luxury hotel taking over the spaces of this Gothic church. Here again they built vertically in the middle of the nave for more floor space. There's essentially a mezzanine restaurant up there. Clearly the restaurant has all sorts of fine wines. Some side pockets of the nave have been converted into lobby seating space for the hotel. Also, the lighting in here is fantastic. And amidst some surviving medieval arts, they have added contemporary art pieces. There are some preserved frescoes in here. This is the cloister of the monastery, a seating area for hotel guests surrounded by the 60 rooms. This is the synagogue of Maastricht, now the only operating synagogue in Limburg. That is a former industrial building that I'll check out later. But first I'm going to Lumiere, a cinema located inside the old power station of the Sphinx factories. There is a restaurant at Lumiere, which I can only assume is named after the Lumiere brothers, so I am going to have lunch here. The theming in this old power station is great, Yet another fantastic new use of an out-of-date structure. Being a cinema, there are some movie posters in here, like Gone with the Wind. And that Kit Carson poster from 1940 is interesting, because it is customized for the old Royal Maastricht cinema. I had an egg, ham, and cheese sandwich that was excellent. Definitely come by Lumiere for at least the restaurants, but they do have movies here too. So with that great welcome, we are now going to explore some faculties of Maastricht University. The university is located all over the city in separate buildings, it doesn't have a uniform campus. 
They are actually the prime and original example of repurposing old buildings here in Maastricht. As we will see, the different faculties or departments incorporate a variety of historic buildings around town. For instance, the Venere Law Faculty is inside an appropriate monumental structure from 1935. This is the former provincial seat of government of Limburg built in 1935. In the 80s, it was replaced by the new location where they signed the Treaty of Maastricht in 1992. This former government center is fantastic, and they actually use the former courtroom of the province for lectures and moot courts. Maastricht University is the most international university in the Netherlands. About 56% of the over 22,000 students are foreign. It is a highly regarded internationally ranked university, and it's actually not that old. It was established in 1976, but has grown a lot since then. Now inside the former Jesuit monastery, these are some original stained glass windows with religious scenes. That is interesting to see here in a secular university building. The former chapel of the Bonfontaine Monastery is now a student dining room. That building houses the Maastricht Natural History Museum. I do not have time to visit that, but Maastricht is important because the first Mosasaurus fossils were discovered here in the 18th century. The Moss of Mosasaur derives from Maastricht. This is the University College Maastricht, a small liberal arts college that is part of Maastricht University. It is housed inside the 15th century Nieuwenhof Monastery. This is the oldest building in the Netherlands used for higher education. The former chapel room is now the largest lecture hall of the University College. It still has its excellent stained glass windows. This is much better than the average lecture hall. and this attic is used for study space. Many university buildings are located around one of the surviving city walls. These walls were besieged by the French in 1673, and the famed musketeer D'Artagnan was killed right around here. If you would like to learn more about that, then check out my video on Maastricht's fortifications, which is linked in the description. They have a deer habitat at this newer area of Maastricht University. The university fairly recently moved into this former NATO installation. That's pretty interesting. And now we'll head back under one of the medieval city walls. This is a statue of Alphonse Olterdissen, a composer and poet who wrote in a local Maastricht Limburgish dialect. This is the entrance to St. Martin's Hofje, a courtyard of alm houses built in the 18th century that was largely home to older women. This building houses the Library of Maastricht University. And there's this really cool art glass tree outside.
So Maastricht University has done some fantastic redevelopments of historic structures, and in general, Maastricht does a magnificent job in saving its history by doing something new and sustainable with its bounty of antiquated structures. Here is the most recent example, the Food Church. It just opened here in 2022, and inside this exquisite and well-preserved space, they have installed a variety of food stands so people can try global cuisine in this former church. I have come back to what is known as the Eiffel Building in Maastricht's more contemporary Sphinx Quarter. This big industrial structure was built in 1928, and it was a sanitary wear factory. So inside the Sphinx Passage, they have a display of various sanitary products that were produced here over the years. It was a revolutionary factory building for its time, as it had long open floors to optimize space for assembly of these bathroom necessities, of which they have hundreds of examples. This exhibit emphasizes that Maastricht was the first industrialized city in the Netherlands. The factory shut down in 2006, and the structure sat empty for years until, following the trend here in Maastricht, it was redeveloped for a new lifespan. The Sphinx is now home to a student hotel, there's also office space, and up on the top floor there is a restaurant. The Bold Rooftop Bar is a fantastic restaurant. This beef was so freaking good. The restaurant also offers panoramic views over Maastricht. From here you can technically see three countries. The Netherlands, obviously, but also Belgium and even Germany. I hope you enjoyed this look at Maastricht's extraordinary efforts to make the old new again and prosper. I think other cities around the world need to follow Maastricht's example of what to do with their abandoned historic structures. I have other videos on the history and attractions of Maastricht linked in the description, and also have all sorts of similar videos filmed all over Europe and America. Please like this video, share it, and subscribe to my channel for more. Also thanks to my friends for showing me around, I really appreciate it, and thanks for watching.